I appreciate you joining us today for another brief look into God's Word. Today is February 15th. We are in Numbers chapter 7 today, and just the one chapter. We jump over to Numbers today, and this is the account where the leaders of Israel bring their offering to, to the Lord. So in Numbers chapter 7, let's just look at it a little bit. And it's somewhat of a chapter that a lot of... You're probably wondering what I'm going to say about it, frankly. But in Numbers chapter 7, the leaders of Israel, the head of the fathers' houses, were the, who were the leaders of the tribes, they make an offering. They bring their offering to the Lord. And the Lord says to Moses, verse 5, accept these from them. So Moses took the carts and the oxen and gave them to the Levites. And just for the sake of brevity... It's going to go through, and each leader of each tribe is going to bring the same thing. So let's just see what the first one brings. In verse 12, The one who offered his offering on the first day was Nashon, the son of Amenadab from the tribe of Judah. His offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, one gold pan of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one kid of the goats as a sin offering, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two ox and five rams, five male goats, five male lambs in their first year. This was the offering of Nashon, the son of Amenadab, verse 18, on the second day, and on it goes on consecutive days. Okay, to look at the account... I wanted to consider the nature of God, and let's say this. One of the things we see within this chapter is that God is orderly. And we see in Scripture, throughout Scripture, that, that our God is an orderly God. Let all things be done decently and in order. And I know we quote that passage all the time, but it, it helps us to understand God is orderly. The feeding of the 5,000, the Lord commanded them to sit down in the ranks. God is orderly. Even in creation, we see... There's an, order, there's an orderliness to it. God is not the author of confusion. He never has been. He never will be. That's not who he is. He is orderly. He is not, well, just whatever happens, happens. That's not God. God is not chaotic. God is not chaos. God is not whatever you want to do, do. That's No, that's anarchy. That's the opposite of God. It's the devil who keeps everything stirred up and kind of whatever happens, happens. God is orderly. He always has been. And in this chapter, we see his orderliness come, uh, his orderliness on full display, if you will. But we also see that God is impartial. Each leader of each tribe brought the same thing, it looks like. And when we really consider the nature of God, it's impressive that he is impartial. Now, we'll have to clarify that. Because in some ways, and I'm thinking of the parable of the talents that the Lord gave to each one, the Master gave to each one based on their ability. And God does expect those who have more ability to use more to use their abilities, frankly. Let those who are rich be rich in good works. God does not expect the impoverished to do the same, the same works with their prosperity that he expects the rich to do. So in, in that sense... We, we see that, that facet of this, but, but to just back up and to consider, at the same time, God is impartial. He expects each one of us to turn from our sins. He expects each one of us to confess that His Son is the Son of God. He expects each one of us to be baptized for the remission of our sins. He expects each one of us to live faithfully to Him. He has the same expectations for each one of us, whether we're male or female, rich or poor, Jew or Gentile, slave or free, it doesn't matter. He's impartial. Here in Numbers chapter 7, you see that impartiality on full display. We also see within this chapter, though, that God is demanding. And what I mean by that, to look back at it, it makes the statement that when the Lord says, accept these from them in verse 5. God is demanding in the sense of not everything is acceptable. He deems what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. When Cain and Abel, pardon me, bring their offerings, he does not respect Cain off, Cain's offering. It was not acceptable. He did not accept it. Nadab and Abihu offer strange fire that the Lord had not commanded. He did not accept it. And that's we see that throughout Scripture. 
God is demanding as we come to him as a living sacrifice. It is our reasonable service, and we do what is we we have to do what is acceptable to him, and he he tells us what is acceptable. It's not just left to us. He's the architect. He tells us. He shows us the pattern, like we've spoken about recently. But he is demanding in that sense. Not everything is acceptable. As you look at these burnt offerings that each individual brought on behalf of their tribe, and we see burnt offerings, we see sin offerings, we see peace offerings, we see grain offerings. And I think that helps us to see, frankly, the power of Jesus, but it also helps us to see the relationship that we have with God. And that it's not just, oh, we give thanks. No, each one of these is a different facet of the relationship that Israel was going to have with God. That there needed to be an atonement for sin. But there also needed to be a peace offering. There's a thank offering. The grain offering. Each one of these, each one of these is a different facet of the relationship, but you put them all together and you see our relationship with God as we have Jesus as our advocate, as our propitiation, as the sacrifice, as, as our brother, as our savior. All these things are a shadow. But it wasn't just a burnt offering. It wasn't just a sin offering. It wasn't just a peace offering. It's all of these things together. Each one of these things together. And it helps us to understand, I, I hope, the relationship that we, we are to have with the Lord. Hope this brief study has been beneficial for you. Hope you have a good day. Appreciate you following along with us, and we hope you join us for our next study.